Hi, I'm Lloyd from Bumstead Bicycles, and today I wanted to do a video on bike fit and sizing. If you're in the market for a new e-bike and you're doing a lot of research on the internet and you're trying to figure, you know, you see all the stuff about, you know, the range of sizes that fits a person, you know, whether it's a standard frame, a step-through frame, I've got some advice and tips for you to help you make an informed decision. Um, if you like these videos, please click on the subscribe. It really helps so that I can do more videos. And anyway, let's get started with this. And it requires some tools to start. Um, You'll notice if you've, if you've looked on spec or sizing charts, a lot of companies will say it fits someone from five foot four to six foot or, you know, this, this big number and they always give you your overall height of a person. Well, okay, looking at me standing here, um, overall height, I'm at five foot 10. Um, if someone come, you know, calls me on the phone and says, I'm five foot 10, what size bike should I ride? Right off the bat, I'll have an approximate idea of what size bike, but I won't know for sure until I ask them the, the most important question, what's your inseam? Because if you think about it, this doesn't tell me, tell you how how much room you have from the floor to your crotch area. And that will tell you how much standover height you have over a particular bicycle frame, especially a more standard frame than a step through frame. So again, standover height is the most imp important thing on a bicycle and your inseam on you of your physical body and very simple way to do it. Whether it's a, a piece of wood, a broomstick, whatever you got, and you bring this up so you're basically sitting on it, it touches, and you have a tape measure. I've had some people, they say they'll go put up against the wall. Some people will have someone, you want this to be level, and you measure then what is that distance from the floor to get your standover height. So here I am at 33 inches. So you can then take that 33 inches, because we're here in the shop, you got a physical, about here, we're at 30 inches. I've got three inches of standover over that, more than enough to not land on that frame if I come off the saddle quickly, I come to a panic stop. We're just getting on and off of this bicycle. I have comfortable room here. Um, if you come around here, what you've got to watch, and this will be part of if you can find from the manufacturer you're looking. So, right, you've got physical distance here from the nose of this saddle to the front of my body. If I come back off of here, if that manufacturer says their standover height is measured here, well, as you just saw, I'm standing clear up to here. So you've got to watch where that standover height number is, especially on a sloping tube like that. Now, if the frame has a completely flat top tube, all right, it doesn't matter where in this distance they measure it. So look for that also. It is critical that you can stand over the frame on a standard frame bike, you need, ideally you want about an inch of clearance. I've had some customers, again, sizing of overall, their inseam, maybe they have very short legs and a lot longer torso, if you can visualize that. So, you know, their legs for their overall are fairly short, so that then the second part of sizing is then from the seat to the handlebars when you reach, so they may, if they got a bike that they had an inch of clearance here, the bike feels small to them as far as when they're sitting on the seat, if you can picture that. When you're sitting on the seat and you're reaching for the handlebars. So someone that they know right off the bat, yeah, I've got short legs for my height. You might 
have to go with this being really close, or you go to something in a step through. Um, you notice I'm not calling this a female or a girl's bike. Those days are long gone. All of us love the fact that we can get on and off of a bike and not have that bar coming across. High performance bikes, yeah, you're gonna have that cross bar. More recreational bikes, something you just wanna get out there for some exercise, you can't beat a step through frame, awesome. And then in that instance, now you're, you still need your inseam though, because I'm gonna set these down. Let's use, again, me as the example. This is a medium large. To get the right saddle height, I need to bring this up so that when I am sitting on this seat, I have good leg extension. If this seat is a lot lower, so if I could do this while I'm still sitting on it, you notice as that seat goes down, more and more bend. Doesn't seem like a big deal here, but as you come across the top of the pedal stroke, this gets more and more uncomfortable. Um, if you have knee issues, if you're not very flexible, this can be downright uncomfortable. You need that seat up high enough to get the proper leg rotation to make it comfortable. So in this instance, if I got the small medium bike, I would have to have this seat so far out of the bike that I run out of seat post even. I can't get the proper leg extension. And as a bike gets smaller this way, this distance gets shorter. So not only am I gonna have my seat too high up, but now my seat's even higher than the handlebars and I'm too small this way. So again, Overall height, not nearly as critical as knowing your inseam dimension and your torso dimension to get the proper bike. Um, a lot of people now are buying their bikes online, internet, for whatever reason, they can't find a shop in their area that stocks the bike. So it's gonna be really critical that you, that the company has a chart that shows those numbers. Um, so there's the basics on that. Next thing on the list of sizing, and again, on a standover bike, you're swinging a leg over, it just matters. Um, maybe a reason why to get a step through bike. Again, back to mobility, we talked about, hey, maybe you're, you've got bad knees or something. I, I'm getting a lot of customers coming in, you're gonna, on a step through bikes, how high <clears throat> is this step through? from the ground. These two bikes, let's just use a great example here. A little bit difference in the design of the frame. This is a taller bike overall, but let's do it from this side. We've got approximately 20 and a half, let's call it 21, because right here. When you step over this bike, your foot has to cover the whole thing. So about 21 inches to step over that bike. This bike, even though it's a quote, larger bike, step over is about 18 inches. So there's something, you may have to have someone help you with this or measure, grab something. How high can you lift? I'm getting a lot of people that are wanting these e-bikes because they you know, this is a way to get out and get some exercise that they didn't think they could do before. You know, they might walk in here with a cane. They need a little bit of help, but they're like, I think I can ride a bike. And they go to lift their foot over that bike and they can't quite make it. They, they, their mobility is not there. They come over to the next bike and you know, that, that extra inch or so makes a difference that they can get through and step over the bike. Here's another version of a lower frame design, but not nearly as low as the two step-throughs there. Again, they call this more of a stagger frame. So again, it is lower. If you're worried about standover height and not so much stepping through, this gives you that added standover, 
but it sure doesn't give you much this way. You almost will come on and off this bike like you would a traditional. So again, you know, can you step over this, something that high? Um, some of the bikes will go, I've had customers with this. Oh. So not only is it fairly low, but there's quite a bit of room here to get your foot through. I'm curious. I think this is the lowest of my standovers at 16 inches. So not only is it the lowest, but there's quite a bit of room here to carefully get your foot through. Some of the other ones you might've noticed, it is, you know, it's a little tight putting your foot through there. So again, measure. How high can you lift your foot to get it on and off of that bike? So again, in sizing, you know, you might just not even pay attention. Oh, it's stepped through. I should be able to, to get through that. Look how low that is. Well, maybe the person in the video demonstrating, I, you know, I can lift my leg this high easily. But a lot of customers come in, they can, they, they literally have to drag their foot across to get over this bike. But on this model, they make it. They just tried those two. They could not get their foot over it. Um, there are things, again, depending on your stability, you can tip this bike down and effectively get that a little lower. But again, it's a balance thing. By tipping this bike over, you can't use it for stability to hold you're lowering it down to step over. Again, sizing wise, consider what is the height of the step over? Even on the, the lowest step through frames, can you do that? So to kind of to summarize, your inseam, very critical, especially on a standard frame bike. Um, on step throughs, then it's more a matter of, again, your inseam, how tall does it need to be for saddle height? And then third, do you have the mobility to step over that frame on a step through frame? So there's some of the basics of, of fitting yourself for a bike, especially if you can't go in and test them for yourselves in a shop. If you're looking on the internet and looking at specs, trying to decide, you know, regular, medium, large, these companies throw out so many different ways of sizing their bikes. Uh, it gets, to me, it's just downright confusing. Years ago, we went by numbers. A bike frame was 15 inch, 17 inch, and that told us from the crank to the frame how many inches that was. Well, all of us, if you say 12 inches, 15 inches, 24 inches, you've got an idea of how big that is. When I say small, medium, regular, large, there's, there's no reference other than that you know one's bigger than the other, but by how much? And what if one company's regular is an inch different than another company's regular? Well, that inch could be the difference between you being able to ride it or not. So them having a chart and showing actual physical numbers of those parts of the bike, find that. It's critical to when that bike shows up at your house that it fits you. Thanks.